Welcome back, everybody, once again. My name is Portia Mkiza, and this is Let's Talk KZN Going Global. And I am not by myself today. I've got Rudy Page, who's all the way in London. I've got Tembiso Malala, who is the Tourism KZN chairperson. So today, as usual, we're talking everything tourism. We're talking empowerment. We're talking improving the economy community um, uh, economy and um, the song that we just played now is by o Son it's Sondela by Trezor featuring Umsaki and once again they are being broadcast live in London so everybody in London gets to hear the talent that we have in KZN and uh, let's just get right to it and um, le le let me just speak to um, Mr. Tembiso Malala who is KZN Tourism um, chairperson. Mr. Mandela, how are you? I'm well, uh, Mom Keys. Uh, thank you very much. Greetings to you. Greetings to your listeners, uh, to my brother, Rudy Page. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and great appreciation uh, you for creating such an initiative and uh, a, a, a spot like this where we are able to discuss uh, this very critical uh, uh, economic industry, which is tourism, greatly appreciated. Great, great, great. Amazing. So, Thank um, you so, much. so I'm going to take over from here now, and I've got a, a few questions for you, Mr. Maglala. Thank you. It's really pleased to see you again. And um, yes, yes, Rudy. And I think it's great in terms of your approach uh, on this uh, community economic tourism. And um, so we'll talk in a bit more detail. But f first of all, um, could you kind of let us know, the, the, the global audience that we're now speaking to, how, how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected the tour tourism industry in KZN? We're on an upward trajectory, uh, having attracted in 2019, I think around about 800,223 uh, uh, tourists in, in, in KZN, mm -hmm. who brought a, a, a direct spend of around about 6.5 billion. And uh, the average stay was around about nine nights. So these are some of the statistics that show that we were growing. Then all of a sudden, uh, the COVID-19 brought us uh, to this abrupt still. Uh, it has affected uh, businesses, uh, some hotels closed down and uh, also people lost their jobs, which uh, the, the, it was the most devastating impact as uh, people will know that uh, on average, we employ around about 165,000 uh, people in the tourism sector. It could even be more. These are ju just direct numbers that we are talking about. So it affected us quite uh, immensely. Also, another thing uh, that affected us, the second wave of the uh, 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 of, of the pandemic, uh, 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 Rudy and Portia, whereby it was labeled as the South African variant. Yes. So, so all the countries all of a sudden closed uh, yeah. down on South Africa, South African tourism. So it affected us uh, quite a lot. Uh, and some of you will uh, you'll know uh, 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 that it was not just a South African uh, oh. pandemic or variant, but the perception and the, what the media, the hype that was created by the media mm -hmm. made other countries to believe that it was a South African variant. So in a nutshell, we were uh, 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 adversely affected by uh, e COVID-19. We are still trying to recuperate. And right now we are being warned about the third wave. Mm -hmm. But uh, as uh, Maya Angelou uh, would say in her classic po poem, Still I rise. Still we are rising rise. from the ashes as a as a South Africa's case at end. Uh, absolutely. And and following That's on what? from that still I rise theme, what has been the response of tourism KZ, KZN to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 in KZN itself? Thank you very much. I, I, I think as, as KZN, we were very uh, proactive. Mm. Uh, firstly, we had to mobilize and raise awareness about the importance of compliance and also uh, try to lobby the government to fast track uh, 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 
the 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 the, the, the well, what do you call the call these injections? People that get uh, getting the injections for uh, COVID nineteen. Yeah, vaccine. So, yeah, vac- vaccination. Mm-hmm. So we we lobbying government to say as soon as we have that uh, herd immunity, it will become easier for other countries to accept our people uh, and also for them to bring uh, uh, to, for tourists to come into the country. So that was the first thing that we did. Also, we developed a, a tourism uh, recovery plan through cooperation of all uh, uh, stakeholders and uh, product owners. Interest, interestingly, uh, uh, Rudy, uh, all along, I must say this, our tourist uh, operators and, and product owners, especially the white owned one, mm. uh, never realized, have never realized the importance of collaborating with the government. So yeah. one of the positive spin-offs of uh, uh, COVID-19 was that we realized that we, have in, we are in this symbiotic existence. We need each other more than ever. We started to collaborate with each other. They started to engage with us, we engage with them. So that was one of the positive spin-offs of finding a, a, a common ground with the, especially the private sector. Mm-hmm. We also assisted many affected tourism product owners, especially the, uh, the small, medium, macro enterprises, especially those that are owned uh, largely by the, uh, uh, the, the Africans in particular, to access the funding because uh, there's a lot of bureaucracy and red tape when they apply for this uh, 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 recovery uh, uh, funding or, or relief fund. So we assist them, uh, assist them, assist them quite a lot through our office at Tourism KZN. And also, also as uh, Tourism KZN, we set aside, uh, although it's not in, in enough, the MIAGA fund of, of around about 20 million uh, to assist those uh, 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 tourism owners or product owners were adversely affected by e- 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 COVID-19. Uh, and also we started focusing on our strengths to say domestic tourism has always been our strength. Out of all the nine provinces, we have been the leading uh, province in KZN and in as much as we are also attracting international uh, tourists like uh, British tourists uh, are very much attracted to KZN due to the uh, 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 the history yeah, of, of yeah. these two, two countries, like uh, mm. the the battlefields and so on and so yeah. on. So we've, we we are not sitting down. We are doing quite a lot. We have consolidated our marketing drive to different districts, and now we are using the district based approach wow. as part of our transformation uh, 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 agenda, whereby we are looking at rural and township tourism. Uh, 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 we might be using the different term, but it's more about community economic tourism, the term that we, uh, that we are using, Roti. We are coming out quite strongly. We are consolidating on our approach. And lastly, also, we are encouraging uh, product owners uh, in tourism to diversify. You've already touched on this one uh, because uh, KZN is quite diverse but we are encouraging people to be more innovative now, to be more creative. Uh, we talk about cultural tourism, yes. uh, local cuisine, uh, like for instance, people after COVID-19, people were, were uh, during the lockdown, people were locked in their townships in particular in rural areas. They started producing something, uh, uh, food and all that stuff. So that's what uh, we are encouraging, uh, local uh, e- e- economy. Cultural tourism, the homestays, uh, the trails, religious tourism, and so on. So we are encouraging people to explore different avenues uh, and explore opportunity, uh, new opportunities in the tourism sector. Because after COVID-19, uh, I assure you, uh, Rudy, things will never be the same. It will need people who will be creative and innovative in the industry. Thanks for that. And you've really given quite a comprehensive uh, response. And I, and of course, you, you alluded to the supply chain as well. So it, it is many, many, many more jobs when you look at the supply chain and the suppliers, which is excellent. And then, of course, the um, at this time, this collaboration between 
government and the private sector at, at the private sector at all levels right down into the neighborhoods is mm. essential and of course mm. what you've kind of said there gives a sense of um transformation as well as you said Definitely. things will never be the same so it's not just about continuation it's about transformation and and uh, and that all inclusive sustainable development economic development really set out very clearly in the UN sustainable mm. development goals as well so mm. i can i can see the alignment in in what you're saying so tourism in KZN in particular and south africa in general has a great potential for creating employment opportunities however we understand that tourism remains one of the least transformed industries and controlled previously by advantaged individuals so how how are you dealing with the issue of transformation in that in the sector at that local economic level so that where the small businesses can access so the barriers to access into the into the community economic tourism sector is you know yeah. have been removed basically yeah. Thank you, Rudy, for that question. I'm happy also you touched on United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I like their theme, which says, leave no one behind. Yes. Yeah, I always emphasize that even in my presentations. We aim at leaving no one behind. Hence, uh, we, are, we are very aggressive and radical in transforming the industry. Uh, because uh, also those who are still holding on to power resisting transformation, they are realizing that uh, it, it is doing no good also to them. Uh, it's counterproductive. So what, what, what we are doing, we are using uh, the, the community-based approach. Yes. Because we, are, we want our people to participate, uh, but not only to participate, but also to benefit. Like, for instance, if we have a game reserve, uh, like we have the InfoLaws and Tlutlue, huge game reserve. The question is how are surrounding communities uh, mm. participating and benefiting out of that? To us, transformation is about that. Secondly, also transformation is about building the structures that will participate in the uh, uh, transformation process and also in the tourism sector, uh, like we are uh, facilitating the formation of the community tourism organizations, the city owns. My brother, uh, 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 Ustembe, so is one of the leading mm -hmm. figure in, uh, in the formation of the, uh, 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 this tourism organization through the Association of uh, Tourism Organizations. So through that, we know that in each and every community will have this CTO that will help to develop the tourism routes identify the heritage sites and also help to market the area. And also we are encouraging people, Roger, to begin to tell their stories. For us, tourism is about people telling the real stories. We haven't even started. We haven't even scratched the paint of, of, of telling the real stories uh, of, of KZN, be it uh, cultural, uh, be it traditional, uh, like, for instance, the story of the Zulu nation from its mm. uh, inception. Uh, 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 one uh, realized how important this history mm. is, unfortunately, after the passing of uh, uh, our great king, uh, May Sol, rest, uh, uh, rest in peace. So uh, people telling their stories and, and also integrating heritage to uh, uh, tourism. So hence we talk about this. Uh, diversification and we are also assisting uh, these marginalized tourism uh, uh, industries or players to access uh, the tourism transformation fund at uh, the, the the national level uh, because uh, this fund was set up so that the new players in the industry can be able to uh, 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 to be integrated and into the mainstream of the of the industry. Uh, hence, we talk about the small, medium, and micro enterprises. So uh, the, the 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 feeling of this form sometimes uh, is very cumbersome for the people who are not used to filling these forms. Yes. Hence, you'll find that they already advantage to people 
are still accessing this transformation fund. So we are assisting as an office, as a tourism case, and, and to ensure that they do access uh, uh, these funds. And uh, as I've said, we are shifting, lastly, uh, our focus now on to rural and township tourism. Uh, to say we understand that tourists are now interested in real experiences. Yeah. I can't take a tourist from Britain and bring uh, him or her to our uh, uh, traditional hotels. People yeah. are tired of that. People yeah. are interested in culture, in yeah. the real life, the real, real experiences. So that's what uh, 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 tourism entails to us, the original and, and the real experience uh, for our tourists. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you for that. That's such a great point. And, and, and what is of particular interest to us, where you said with the, with the people who are not used to filling in forms and dealing with bureaucracy, that they get support. So here in the UK for years, we, we talk about capacity building mm. and, and we have intermediaries so we have intermediaries who can be trusted to work with that enterprise, with that entrepreneur, and taking care of some of the, the key administrative functions that historically have been a barrier to them. Mm-hmm. And particularly with micro businesses, right, we, we, we have these, what was called access to finance programs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what would happen the, the, the entrepreneur would be allocated somebody with an, a, background, a business background, maybe a former bank manager or business consultant. So that person then would help them fill in the forms very clearly, mm. help them with their business plan, and, and then submit their plan to the authority in order to get the funding because the entrepreneur had committed themselves to working with that consultant and the most effective programs, the consultants would themselves would have a proven track record of achievement in their area, but most importantly, have a similar cultural cultural background. So there's trust and understanding of where that entrepreneur is coming from and how that uh, entrepreneur got to where they are. And they have been some of the most uh, effective programs for economic inclusion at that very uh, local level. So, so we've seen how the budget cuts due to COVID-19 pandemic dictating much needed marketing efforts be put on hold and, and the budget be uh, reallocated towards a fight against the pandemic. So it, it was clear that the priority during the last um, uh, hiatus was, and still is, the preservation of um, human life. However, with the world slowly opening up for travel and tourism, possibilities again, how, and there are possibilities again, how is the sector ensuring that it remains at the forefront of travellers' minds, you know, in terms of its profile and impact and the message of of the great products and services that you have in K, across KZN. Thank you very much, uh, Rudy, for that question. Uh, we we are not resting on our laurels. Uh, actually, this provided us with an opportunity not only of planning, but also of uh, aggressive uh, marketing having enough time to showcase what we have. Uh, at the moment, our marketing team with the Deppen marketing team, we're moving all over the provinces in other provinces and in other districts to showcase what we as a province can offer. Even the, uh, internationally, that's what we are doing because uh, we don't want to be caught off guard yeah. when the, you find that the, the world is opening up as we are beginning to live, to learn to live with the pandemic, only to find that we are, we are ill-prepared. Yeah. So what we, what we are doing here, Portia, is to be prepared to market ourselves. And the, you, you, you did talk about the message, to make sure that the message, our message is 
consistent and is very clear and is understood by everyone. So our message is very clear uh, to say we are offering diverse attractions in KZN. We've got uh, the bush, uh, we've got the game, we've got the beach, we've got almost everything that can a, a, a tourist uh, uh, would like to have. So what is important for us right now is to say we continue to assist product owners to package uh, now their products in such a way they become uh, uh, attractive uh, to the post-COVID-19 tourist as uh, uh, the dynamics are changing and the landscape is changing of tourism and the traveling, but we must. We are trying to make sure that we are uh, 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 we have, we are we are we, we up our game and we ensure that we remain relevant and more attractive than ever. Thank, thank you, and that's very clear, and that's uh, some great great thinking there in terms of transformation. Really, really great to hear that. So, tourism quite a Natal is promoting the entry of new enterprises into the tourism market. How many enterprises has it recruited during this 2021-2021 uh, financial year? Yeah, we, 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 we are trying a lot, although they are not on the same level, mm. because when we, uh, uh, recruit, we are recruiting them, we are also making sure that they do get the capacity and we categorize them according to their needs. But all in all, I, I think we have attracted more than uh, 530 of them. But as I'm saying, they are at different levels. There are some that are at the basic level, at the entry point. There are also those who have been operating quite very well only to be uh, uh, affected by the, the impact of, of, of COVID-19. But uh, Comparatively speaking, this number is not enough. We can do more, but against the odd, against all the odds, acknowledging the fact that we have experienced some budgetary cuts uh, as an entity, uh, like all other entities, because uh, some funds had to be uh, 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 refocused yes. to COVID-19 uh, relief funds. So, but against all the odds, we have these people that we are assisting, and we make sure that. They are diverse and they are based in different districts in KZN because we are moving away from this uh, trajectory of saying that we concentrate everything in cities. We are moving to rural areas, we are moving to products in, uh, in, in, in the township and we found that our people are, are very much eager uh, to support those uh, tourist attractions uh, in those areas. Okay, thank, thanks for that. So how many of those are actually from the, the rural or township areas as a percentage broadly, would you say? I, 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 will, I will roughly say it's around about 65 to 69. Yeah, uh, roughly about that because our target really and the way in which we packaged uh, uh, even this uh, uh, kind of relief funds is to ensure that per district, we also focus in those township and rural areas. And also uh, to add on that, uh, just a caveat, we are also encouraging the existing uh, businesses because we don't want to alienate them. Mm -hmm. They've been in the food for quite, field for quite some time, mm -hmm. but we are uh, encouraging them to mentor the existing, uh, uh, the new and upcoming uh, 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 tourism enterprises. So uh, def definitely yeah, we are around about 65 to, 70, but we are very much optimistic that uh, moving forward, the number is going to grow. Okay, and um, glad to hear that because for us, we we kind of call that sector development. Okay. And, and normally what that means is that what you, what you do, you, you get the experienced businesses in a particular sector to speak to the upcoming businesses and it just yes. explained to them in a very in a very practical way how they've overcome some of the barriers you know to get to that size mm. because obviously the small uh, smaller enterprises are wanting to grow because that that will increase their income increase employment 
but they need somebody to show them how and explain. Mm. And the sector development strategies will brings in those organizations who have had that practical experience. Mm. Mm. And mm. of course, a lot of the time it can be linked to part of the overall development of the sector as the sector um, receives its support, continuation support and recovery support from, yeah. from, the, from the public sector. So there's again a, a good uh, um, sharing of interest and, and collective responsibility between both the public and the uh, private sector. So how is um, TKZN planning to formalize and professionalize these those enterprises those those enterprises from the rural and township areas? Yeah, I, I'm happy to talk about something that uh, I think which has become our strongest point uh, because when I became the chairperson that was my uh, focus and needless to say Rudy I became uh, very unpopular <laughs> amongst <laughs> those who have been in the industry because you came with it, I came with these terms of transformation yes. uh, rural and township tourism and uh, really uh, uh, it, because the, the the status quo had never been mm. challenged. Yes. Uh, uh, people were in their comfortable zone. Yeah. But what I, I, I assured them that we need each other. Gradually, uh, it sunk on them that really it's not about uh, 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 destroying the, 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 the existing uh, enterprises, but it's about uh, growing them uh, and also collaboration. But uh, at the same time, it's about allowing uh, the new entrance to grow and flourish. So that has been our uh, uh, our motive all, all along to uh, encourage the, the new entrance. But we, we must also say that uh, in the process of uh, building, starting with the, uh, uh, um, the, uh, the capacity building and all, uh, starting with identifying, we identify them first, then we uh, get into the process of building the capacity but preferably, we prefer people who uh, to use the uh, the township language, know their stories, know yeah. what they want to do, yeah. not because they feel that the uh, 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 tourism sector is an at attractive mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we first have to assess the the passion and the interest uh, in, in in the in the industry. You know quite very well about that, Rudy. So secondly, we, we move to the capacity building uh, of, 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 of these enterprises. Then uh, we assist them also with the identification of uh, sources of funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there are many uh, uh, agencies in South Africa that provide some funding. But uh, and as I've said, there's a lot of uh, red tape and uh, mm -hmm. bureaucracy when they're applying on their own. I'm happy about you were able to share with us that mm -hmm. kind of model, which somehow seems sim similar to ours, but I think we can learn more, more from, your, from your model that you have presented to say uh, it's about accompanying uh, these new enterprises until we can see that uh, they, they, they can stand on their own. Mm -hmm. So after we have uh, made sure that they get this funding or we are assisting them, we we provide some monitoring, which is continuous support for them because we've learned the hard way to say you give people, the people once people get the funding without proper monitoring and evaluation, they regress back or else others disappear uh, in, 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 in the sector. So it's uh, we, we are tracking them now and again as uh, I've mentioned that the industry changes now and again and we always try to make sure that we link them at district level with those other industries, uh, the, the existing and well-established industries uh, in the tourism sector that are doing quite very well. So this part of what we call uh, mentoring. There is a term that you use, you call it sector development. Yeah. yeah. So we, 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 we use that uh, as, a, 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 as an approach. So we have developed a model. Developed a we model. have piloted the model. And we are very much optimistic that it is already bearing some fruits. Uh, uh, and even during these 
uh, hard times of uh, COVID-19. Okay, excellent. And one of the things you could you could consider is using the cluster model. Now, cl clusters are really important because one of the things that is uh, essential for businesses to, to appreciate as they get this support is that it's important that they collaborate with each other. And as a cluster, they can share knowledge, information. But not only that, business education can be provided business support can be provided. And we all say in terms of business support, the first principle of business support is to provide support where an enterprise can be the most competitive. So by forming groups of businesses into clusters, and it may be based on neighborhood or region or um, uh, sector interests, whether it's crafts, creative industries, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And so as a group, you get that group learning, sharing of expertise and knowledge, talking about what they're doing, thinking of ways that they can collaborate because no one enterprise has all the skills that it needs. And again, it makes sense for uh, enterprises, particularly at that local economic neighborhood level, township level, township level level or village level whichever term we use they're all basically the same is that their way forward is to pool resources and share revenues and that's an important so with what you're doing as well is and through this pandemic there's a necessary mindset shift required by our entrepreneurs yeah. and by our all all our sectors in the the collaboration is the way forward. It's really important. So the cluster oh, model, really developing communities of practice, uh, uh, an essential part of that. Yes, Portia. Awesome. Yeah. That is very nice. Thank you so much, Rudy. As a young entrepreneur as well, working in the tourism industry, I have learned so much from you and the knowledge sharing that you've done today with oh, Mr. Timbiso Mandala. Um, I think our, our views viewers have gained so much in regards to how they can go about to grow their businesses within the tourism sectors and the interesting um, enterprises that you've come up with and especially working together with the CTOs for the different regions I think that's where everything will start in order for us to move ahead and also we're very grateful for the support from you Mr. Magala and Rudy thank you so much as well for your time unfortunately today we have to end the show now until next week same time and there was a fm powered by um fresh fm radio london it's been good to um have you guys and now we're going to go straight to the news thank you so much once again for all your time thank you posh thank, thank you. you rudy thank you god bless thank you see you again soon thank you bye